Good morning, my name is Bridget Sukies. I am the executive director of the Veal Foundation and I would like to welcome you to the fourth annual Think Big Summit. We are excited to have you all join us today in this virtual setting. Through this difficult and challenging year, we have been encouraged by the resilience and passion of the high school students and educators who continue to push forward. The ideas and plans presented throughout the Think Big Challenge have been innovative, creative, thoughtful, and inspiring. Before we officially begin today's program, I would like to take a moment to thank the many volunteers, including coaches, judges, and others in the entrepreneurship community who have supported us in various phases during the Challenge and Summit. On behalf of our board of directors, staff, and partners, thank you again for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the event. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our host and keynote speaker, Justin Lapazan. Justin is the author of What Wakes You Up? and the co-founder and CEO of NextGen HQ, an organization that empowers young entrepreneurs to achieve their purpose. Please join me in welcoming Justin Lafazan. Bridget, thank you so much for that incredible welcome. And we hope everybody that is tuning in is doing great, whether we're finding you at home, in school, tuning in, laptop, phone. We know this year looks very different than many others, but I really appreciate the opportunity to be joining you all for Think Big and the Veal Innovation Challenge and Summit. It's going to be an incredible day, a morning jam-packed with activity and action, a lot of fun stuff. Uh, I figured I'd take a few minutes to tell you a little bit about my story, how I got started in this entrepreneurial game, what I'm thinking about, what I'm looking for today. We'll give you a bit of a run of show uh, for what's going down and then we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, for me, if you're tuning in in the audience, I want you to get active in the comments. I want to drop a comment. Let us know what you're thinking about. Let us know what's going through your mind. If you have a question pop up, be sure to drop it in the comments and, and we're going to make sure to, uh, to have some fun even in this virtual environment. We're going we're gonna to make it happen. For me, my story really begins in this entrepreneurial world at the exact same time that it is for y'all which is for me in high school, I was thinking about in high school, everything you're all thinking about. I'm thinking about how do I get into a great college? How do I get the great job? What is my life? What is my career? My parents nagging me, what are you gonna do with your life, right? You know what I know, it. that's exactly where we are and where we have been. So for me, I was just looking around. I was looking around to try to find some inspiration. I remember one day uh, in physics class, I got into physics class very early in the morning, looking around in physics class, everybody was kind of just like sleeping around me. And it didn't sit so right with me that everybody was so tired and so sleepy. Look, we're all sleep deprived. And if you're high school students, we're so, I, I never get enough sleep. I'm sure you don't as well, but it was more than that. It was this idea that people weren't energized. They weren't inspired by their life, by their work, by their passions. And I was looking around and there were some people in my neighborhood and my community who I did think had that like spark. They were excited about life. They were excited about coming to work, excited about going to school, whatever it is. So I started to meet you know, a couple of these people. I started to meet them in extracurriculars in high school. They were part of the research organization, a research competition, or a business competition, just like we're at today. So I had a taste, a little bit of a taste of that, but I wanted more of it. I, I needed to figure this stuff out. So I got into my dream college, amazing. I worked super hard. And then the next day I called them and I said, Hey, I actually need some time. I, I don't want to go right away. They're like, what do you mean? My parents were like, Justin, are you kidding me? You work so hard. But I knew there was something more here. I needed to explore and uncover something that would inspire me. I wanted to have a career and a life and a job, everything that was fired me up and didn't make me sleep like I was looking around everybody. And something really irked me from that beginning day that I, I was thinking about for a while at this time. So on one hand, we have everybody in the world getting very similar advice right? Everybody's getting the same advice. You're in high school. We, I, we got the same advice. I promise you do really well on your SATs and join the great clubs and get into the great college and internship. Like you feel it all, right? You get that same advice and that advice is great, but we look at the same advice and then we look at the outcome, how everybody's doing. And I'm telling you, I'm looking at it, It's crazy. I heard this for the first time, my junior year of high school, it still blows my mind today that 80% plus four out of five people feel actively disengaged with their job. It means they hate their job and they want to be somewhere else. Blew me, blew my mind. So everybody's getting the same advice. Everybody's ended up not so fulfilled in, in the normal status quo world. So I, 
I, I need to figure my stuff out. I tell college, I got to take a T and I'm going to take some time off. And I start just looking for inspiration. I, I grew up in New York. That's where I am now. So I just start trying to reach people, meet people. Will you get breakfast with me? Will you hop on a call with me? I printed out the Forbes 30 under 30 list at the time, 2012, 13, 14, something like that. I print out the list. And you know what I do? I email folks on this list. A lot of them you're going to be joining today. Some of the judges, incredible. I start emailing these people and I say, Hey, my name is Justin. I'm a high school student in New York. I'm 17, whatever it is. I would love to interview you. They're like, interview you for what? I'm like, I don't know. I'll get to that later. So I start emailing all these people. I wonder, Hey, can I interview you? Can I learn more about you? Can I see what you're up to? So I start interviewing all these people. I'd hop on a call and say, I just want to know, why, what do you, why do you like what you do? How do you find your passion? What does passion mean to you? Are you inspired? What are your tips? What are your I just start talking to people. I start trying to get all this advice that I can. It's starting to come together. People are taking my call. And of course, a, me, a million people didn't take my call. They didn't respond, but that's okay because people started to answer me. I'm like, wow. So I was starting to surround myself with real movers and shakers that were excited by the work that they were doing, excited by impact, excited by giving back. I now call these people entrepreneurs, but I didn't know it back then. But what I was doing was I was just searching for the entrepreneurs. I was searching for entrepreneurs. So I have a big idea. Me and a partner in around 2014, we have a big idea. So we're meeting all these amazing people. I, I, I get a co-founder, we come together. We're like billion dollar idea, ready? Is it the new technology? Is it the new? No, it's none of that. I'm telling you, my big idea was let's host an event. Let's host a conference for the most game-changing young people out there. People who are also saying, I want more. I want to have more impact. I want to have more growth. I want to have more success. I want to meet other people who could help me get there faster. So we host in 2015 the first ever Next Gen Summit. That's what we named it. However, the first name we named it it was called the Wantrepreneurial Conference. You want to know why? It's because I, my deal, we, we wanted to be entrepreneurs. I didn't know what it was, what it meant to be an entrepreneur, but we wanted to be entrepreneurs. So we got these people together. We hosted a conference. I put my whole life savings, Dylan, put a big credit card down. And it doesn't go super, super to plan. We think big picture, thousands of people are going to be there big sponsors, everybody, it's going to change the game. Uh, we didn't really have that many people there. We lost every dollar of money that we put into it and more. The production of the event, the very first speaker, a banner falls down. First speak, mortified. The whole staff is me, Dylan, and both our parents came down to volunteer for us. So I'm talking a makeshift operation. But you know what? The weekend was a game changer. 2015, we're 17, 18, running around. We host it in Austin, Texas. And these young people start to meet each other. They start to connect. They start to, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Because you know what? It showed for the first time what the power could be of when you get the right entrepreneurial young people together, you give them resources, you give them opportunities, you give them mentors, they can change the world. And so what I ended up doing is continuing to grow that organization. My partner, Dylan, we now have a 20 person full-time team or in New York city, shout out to the next gen fam. Who's been part of our mission for now seven years. We're venture backed by some great investors and we're chasing our dreams to build a business of our lives and our dreams that helps young entrepreneurs win. I'm obsessed with young entrepreneurial thinkers and how we can all think like an entrepreneur. I ended up writing a book about the topic. It was called What Wakes You Up. The concept was this, all right? This is the concept. Everybody stays up late. I stay up late, you stay up late, social media, whatever it is. But I wanted to find something in my life, my career, my work, whatever it is. I wanted to find something that got me out of bed in the morning. My alarm clock went off. I wanted to get up and be like, I'm so pumped to be going to work today, doing my job, have my impact, whatever you're doing. I wanted to have a life that I was so excited about. And I started you know, collecting these stories of amazing people. You're going to meet a lot of them today, your judges, friends, mentors, staff, who are entrepreneurs and who are about helping entrepreneurs. Uh, so that's a little bit about my story. For seven years, we've continued to do the same thing of bring together education, bring together resources, bring together mentorship to help the next generation of entrepreneurs win. So we have a jam-packed day today. We're going to have 
a lot of interactive activities. So make sure you're at your device, you're entering codes, you're gonna be doing stuff. We're gonna have incredible final presentations on the challenge. I'm gonna tell you more about that in a few minutes. We're gonna have judges. And we have, we have brought together an incredible judging cohort who are analyzing these pitches. We're gonna look and understand the businesses and, and rank and eventually we're gonna decide who's gonna win and we're gonna give some big money away. So you're gonna have an incredible morning. This is a jam packed day of action, of power, of growth, of learning. But I want you to keep one key thing in mind. The key that we want you to walk away with is just get started. Just get started, just get moving. You have that big idea. You're gonna walk away from today feeling inspired, feeling excited, just get started. What can you do tomorrow? What can you do later today? Who can you call this week? Great, you have a big idea. You have a great new concept. How can you take one step in the right direction? All it takes is that one step in the right direction. For us, getting started is key. We have all these big dreams. You know what we say? We have these big dreams. I got a big billion dollar idea. I got an app. I got a, it's going to change the world. But then we get so caught up. We say, ah, I don't know where to go. We get to anal analysis paralysis. We say, I don't have the right mentors. I don't have enough money. I don't have the right idea. I don't have the team yet. I need to just sit on it a little bit. But what we're here to tell you is that's not what we're here to do. We're here to just get started. The VL team, youth entrepreneurship, what it is about is getting in the game, realizing there are problems in this world. There are so many problems. And the way that we can solve those problems is with innovation, by creating new things, thinking of new ways to do things. There are so many incredible stories of people, a lot of them you're gonna to meet today who have big ideas for how to change the game and how to really bring innovation to solve so many of our problems. I'll tell you one amazing story of a prior Veal Innovation Challenge Think Big Summit keynote speaker. Her name is Ann Makazinski. Ann. She is the definition of an entrepreneur. But when she was in high school, you know what she was thinking about? Like all of us, we're not realizing we're entrepreneurs. We're just saying, I have ideas. I got creative energy. I want to move. I want to share. I want to have impact. So Anne has a pen pal. She's talking to her pen pal. And the pen pal is telling her overseas, they connected through an international organization and grew up in Canada. And you know what she says? She says, I'm struggling in school. And, you know, tries to unpack that a little bit further. Why are you struggling? What's going on? What's happening? And it's a crazy story. This pen pal is telling Anne, that from her home country, where it was from, they don't have lights. So they, when it gets dark out, it's literally crazy. They don't have lights. So many little things that we take for granted. So Anne is in high school. The pen pals across the world from her. She doesn't really know this person. But like all of you who are tuning in from high schools around the country, you're thinking, how do I just apply that innovation mindset? How do I just get started? How do I get moving? Anne said, I got a big idea. What if we could have a flashlight that we can give to folks around the world to give them that light? But I'm not talking batteries. I'm not talking we have to charge it, replace. I'm talking just from the heat of my hand, it can power that flashlight. Big idea. So what she do? She just got started. Started tinkering in her lab, making little inventions. All of a sudden, she created a flashlight that is powered by the heat of the human hand powers light. Incredible innovation. Incredible, incredible innovation. So Anne was able to use what we're talking about here. She had an idea for innovation. She saw a problem happening. But you know what she did? She didn't wait back. She says, I'm going to just get started. I have innovation ideas to solve problems, to get moving, to develop myself, develop my career. I'm going to just get started. And now Anne is like a total beast. She's out here, you know, speaking on stages and writing books and creating inventions. But she just got started when you were in high school. So with that, y'all, I want to hear your questions. I want to know what you're thinking about. So we're going to bring up some questions, uh, you know, from the audience, continue to drop them in Facebook live chat. Before we do that, I want to say two things. The first is another huge thank you. I want to say a huge thank you to Bridget Sukis, to Brant Fairchild, the Field, Field Foundation, all the coaches, the volunteers, the staff, everyone who's around who's making this day possible. Thank you for being here. And number two, to the students who are participating in this challenge or tuning in live, I'm telling you, one piece of advice is just get started. You're going to be inspired from today. You're going to get some tips, some tricks, meet some people. Just get going. And we know we're going to be back March 2022 in person for this virtual time. You know what we got to do? We got to keep building, keep growing, and just get started. With that, we'd love to take some questions from the audience. 
continue to drop them in Facebook and we'll have some great time. Thanks so much for having me, y'all. Justin, thanks so much for getting us started and kicking us off this morning. As you said, um, if you all out there, if you want to drop some questions into Facebook chat, we'd be happy to get those to Justin. We do have a couple that have already come in. So Justin, let me fire these off at you. Um, you know, you talked about all these entrepreneurs you've connected with. Overall, is there a number one skill that entrepreneurs really need in order to be successful? Y'all, Brand is firing these big questions. He's saying entrepreneurs, we're meeting a lot of entrepreneurs, we're doing a lot of things. What's the one skill that we think about when it comes to how can entrepreneurs be successful? There are a lot of skills out there, a lot of skills that it takes to be an entrepreneur. I'm always working on my game. I'm, I'm like LeBron out here, you know, I'm trying to always get better. Oh, I'm, I just compare myself to LeBron. That was for everybody who loved that. So here's the scoop. When it comes to skill, you know what the number one is that I guarantee you LeBron would tell you as well? It's a persistence that you will never give up. Hear me out on this one. If you never give up, you become by definition unstoppable in your pursuit. If you never give up, you become unstoppable in your pursuit. So if you have a big idea, I'm not saying you hide it from everybody, you do your own, no, you share it, you ask for feedback, you talk to mentors, talk to your teacher, talk to your teams, get a lot of feedback, but you keep moving forward. You remain persistent on your mission. It may take years, it may take decades, but we've heard the stories. For me, we're seven years into the next gen HQ journey, seven years, and I'm telling you it's day one. We are just getting started. So for me, the number one skill I look for when I'm talking to entrepreneurs, do they have that persistent mindset to keep moving forward, believe in their mission, and eventually you will be successful as long as you don't quit? That was an awesome question. Thank you for whoever submitted, and we hope you see more. So continue to get involved in the Facebook chat, and we'll continue to jam. Another question coming in. Again, if you have more Facebook chat, drop your questions in there. Um, for, our, for our young listeners, how do customers... Um, how do you get customers or other folks to take you seriously as a young person when you're out there trying to push your business that you already have or push your ideas? Fran, that's a great question. For everybody in the audience, here's what we're thinking about. We have customers. Customers are the ones who need to get the value. They need to exchange cash. How do we get them to take us seriously as young people? First, shout out John and Shana for filling out that survey and winning. Make sure you're continuing to get engaged. There's links in the comments. Head to the Facebook page. Continue to ask questions. There's a lot of interact interactive activities we got throughout the day, so keep it up. Y'all, you have customers that you're targeting. I don't care what business you have. You have some type of customer that you need to exchange with. There's really two ways you can approach customers. The first is, I have a solution. Hello, does anybody want it? right? That's the approach of, I want to build in a box over here. I'm going to have my great ideas. I'm going to get out there and then I'm going to take it to people. And I'm telling you, not the move. You take the second approach, which is always to try to listen to your customers, get to know them personally, and then you can reverse engineer from there. So when we have a lot of these great businesses, what they're thinking about is, do I know my customer well? Do I have an idea of who my customer is? Is it my own persona? Am I my own customer? Can, do you have people who can give you that feedback of what customers are looking for? Once you can really understand, you're going to realize, guess what? Your product idea probably has to change a little bit. And that's the point. Your product idea should continue to evolve and iterate and develop over time instead of being stagnant. So you want to get customers to take you seriously? I'd say get out there and ask them questions. If you have an app, go find friends of yours and say, hey, what would be useful about this? What do you like about this? What do you not like about this? If there's existing solutions, go to those businesses, go to those providers and say, hey, what are your pain points? What are you struggling with? What are you excited about? If you can get that data, then you'll be able to really understand and get those customers to take you seriously. So that's an awesome question, y'all. Thanks so much for sending them in. Keep sending them in the Facebook chat. We got a lot of stuff coming at you guys today. All right. Thanks, Justin. So we have one more and it's kind of a follow-up, as you said, you know, to get that data where do you go and where should uh, young entrepreneurs go to really look for content? What type of books should they be looking at? Um, where can they find that information on how to be an entrepreneur? Brant, that's an awesome question. Thanks so much for whoever submitted it. It's thinking about, all right, how do I get in my mind the right content, the right people, the right influences to make sure that I, I have what I need to, to keep pushing forward? I'll say this, for anybody who's tuning in live, this is the step one. You're surrounding yourself with events, challenges, organizations like here today, 
that can provide you with that positive community and influence. I think for me getting started, I was like reading all the books, I was watching all the TED Talks, but it wasn't until I got out there and started meeting other entrepreneurs, like many you're gonna meet today, gonna hear from, they're gonna be judges, who inspire me. I see them out there moving, shaking, building, growing, failing, moving back, pivoting. So you wanna know what content to put in your brain, the books, the articles, et cetera. I'd say get out there and, and talk to your friends who are also thinking this, this way. Get involved with organizations like Veal, like Think Big, who can help bring those people together. And then once you're with those people, ask them, hey, how are you getting your inspiration? What's your favorite book that you've read this year? What really inspires you? So we have a lot of recommendations that I can, I can say, but for you, I think the most important piece, listener, is ask your friends, hey, what are you thinking about? Get together. You need that community of positive influence, people who believe in you for you to keep pushing forward and keep growing. So get involved. This event is exactly for that. In-person, virtual, doesn't matter. We're here to help young people stick together, get that innovation support and keep moving forward. So Brent, thanks so much for those great questions. Thanks so much again for the entire Veal team for having me this morning. We're pumped for Think Big. And I know we got an activity coming up. So you tell me uh, where we're going from here. Yep. Thanks again, Justin. Great job. Um, so everybody, again, we're gonna make this a little bit more interactive. Um, so we have a word cloud activity. Justin's going to facilitate that and get us going. We're going to send a slide up here, but check again, Facebook chat. We're going to have a link right there. Um, and the code, we're going to go to www.menti.com. You're going to type in the code 8172652. And our question today is, what is an entrepreneur? So for you, what is an entrepreneur? You can use one to two word phrases for each answer. Give us a couple in there. Those are going to populate. Justin's going to walk us through that. Um, and we'll switch over to that slide in just a second. And Justin will get us going. Awesome, so y'all. So Brent gave you the instructions. The link is provided in the chat. So go to the link. It's menti.com, menti.com. You're entering that code 8172652. And we want to know, what is an entrepreneur? I'm talking every day with entrepreneurs. And they may say, hey, I'm, am I an entrepreneur? I mean, like, well, I think you're an entrepreneur. And they're saying, well, I'm an author, or I have a podcast, or I have a nonprofit I care about, or I am an employee, but I have that intrapreneur in me. I'm very creative. I want to solve more problems. Or they're a student thinking about how they have impacts and how they can grow. So every day I'm out here and I'm talking to these different types of entrepreneurs, and I believe they're entrepreneurs, but we want to know. What do you all think? What is an entrepreneur and what makes an entrepreneur? Is it a mindset? Is it things that they have the way they're seeing the world? Is it a skill set? Is it a type of tools and approach for life that they are doing, working on, thinking about? Is it a career? Are you like a lawyer, a doctor, or an entrepreneur? What do you all think when it comes to what is an entrepreneur and what does that mean to you? And I can't even wait for y'all to meet some of the judges that we have joining us today, because these are three incredible entrepreneurs who are going to be talking about their story when they're looking at the participants, they're looking at these students who are going to be pitching them. They're going to be basing it on their own entrepreneurial journey. And they look very, very different. And you get to meet them in a little bit, but Lonnie and Mai and Tayo, three incredible entrepreneurs with very different paths. Some of them build products and services. Some of them have impact and, and drive value in the nonprofit social change ways. Others speak, they create content, they inspire audiences, a little bit of all three. So we wanna know y'all, what is an entrepreneur? Boom, look at this y'all, look at this. So here's what we got right in the middle, focused business leader. I think that key word here is focused. Entrepreneurs know they got a lot of stuff going on, but they are prioritizing what they care about actualizing passion. I absolutely love that one. We're inspired as entrepreneurs, take action, do stuff, but can we actually actualize that? Make it real. Guys, we got a lot of great answers. Please keep them coming. We wanna know what you're thinking. All right, y'all, risk taker. This is super interesting. So entrepreneurs, y'all are clearly associating this with, you know what? We have dreams that we know, and we know it's gonna be hard. We know we're gonna get said no to. We know we're gonna have obstacles. We wanna take that risk Anyway, we got a lot of incredible ones here. Leader, by far a leader, an entrepreneur, they're a schedule maker. They got to wake up every day and say, hey, it's on me 
I got to take responsibility to make change, to drive impact, and to keep the world moving in, in the way, direction that I see. So they're absolutely a leader. Does anything stand out for you all that is on this board that making you think, hey, why is that here? There's so many incredible problem fixer, very problem oriented. What are the solutions that you can drive? How can we drive progress? Research on uh, that listening mindset, listening to customers, uncovering data. Keep dropping them in y'all. We wanna know what you're thinking. A lot of innovation around here. A lot of folks who are thinking about creating something new, new ideas, new approaches to problems, new solutions, new ways of thinking about things. So interesting, are these adjectives, are these nouns, these descriptions? Being an entrepreneur means so many different pieces. It's clearly so many different people. What else we got? Inventor. Awesome. Awesome, y'all. This was menti.com. What is an entrepreneur? An incredible, incredible word cloud. But y'all, you're not here to think about entrepreneurship. You, you came for a reason, guys. You came for, you were excited about entrepreneurship, but you want to get to business. So in the booth, I hear that our judges have arrived. And so we're, we're now going to move y'all to the challenge and the finals. Okay. Are you guys ready? I, I've been looking forward to this all year, uh, literally all year. The culmination of the Veal Innovation Challenge that began last October. Here's the scoop. We had 109 teams representing 280 students from 13 schools enter the competition. Wow. They first entered written executive summaries for one of two tracks, small business or innovation, innovative big idea. We then said the top 24 teams were invited. They submitted slide decks and videos for round two. We had seven judges in the panel review those round two. And the teams you're about to meet, the final four teams are making it to round three. Two small business, two innovation, four total teams, round three. Y'all, runners up are gonna win $1,000 per team. And the winner of each category, each track, $3,000 cash. When I was in high school, $3,000, are you kidding me? That changed the game, that changes the game. So we got two tracks, two teams in each, runner up, $1,000 per team, grand prize for the winner of each track, $3,000. With that, I wanna introduce our judges to the stage. I'm gonna go one at a time and I wanna understand a bit about the judge, their background. I wanna know what they're looking for. The first up is, Lonnie Lazari. Lonnie, absolute beast of an entrepreneur, 26-year-old CEO and founder of the all-natural skincare company, Simple Sugars. She's a Teal Fellow, Simple Sugars. They make these all-natural sugar scrubs formulated for sensitive skin. Incredible organization that she started when she was 11 years old. She it was a Shark Tank sensation, now runs this multi-million dollar business. Lonnie, welcome to the Think Big Veal Innovation Challenge and Summit. How are you feeling today? How excited are you? for what these participants are bringing us today. I'm feeling great. I'm super excited to be here with everyone. And uh, thank you guys so much for having me. Super excited to hear uh, about all the pitches. Lonnie, this is what I want to know. So Shark Tank called your pitch one of the best. I want to know for your advice to the students who are a little bit nervous backstage, what did you learn from pitching on Shark Tank? And what advice can you give before our you know, finalists go and present today on the act of the pitch and things that you are going to be looking for? So uh, when it comes to the act of the pitch, you know, the first number one most important thing is be confident. Like, you know, your business, you guys have been working really hard to develop these ideas and develop these pitches. Like, you know what you're talking about at this point. So just go in there, be confident and, you know, don't worry about forgetting something because we have Q&A. If you forget to say something, we're going to ask you about it. So don't be nervous um, and just just be confident going into it. Y'all, Lonnie is telling you, you know your stuff, get in the game. And when it comes to the questions, that's when you can bring in. So don't sweat, you forget something, keep moving on. Lonnie, we are pumped to have you here. I cannot wait to get into it. Next up, y'all, we have Mai Moore, the co-founder and executive director of EYEJ, Empowering Youth, Exploring Justice. It's an innovative, very timely nonprofit organization committed to social justice, highlighting the voices, the insights of the next generation. My, she's dedicated her life to creating change in society around the topics like the epidemic of toxic stress, our digital divide. My, we're pumped and grateful to have you here joining us. How are you feeling this morning? 
I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm grateful as well. I'm excited to hear um, the breath and the entrepreneurs that are at the table. Um, and just my advice to you guys is just be yourself. Um, I agree with the confidence statement. It's all about energy. Um, I want to hear how passionate you are about your business, how much you believe in your business and how solid you are and what action steps are you taking as well? What are you taking today? Maya, I want to ask you, you have all your you know, enterprises dedicated to solving social problems. Why are you so excited about innovation being a tool for solving these social problems we all face? Um, I think with my background, I mean, I've dabbled into um, a lot of startups. Um, I'm previously from the tech industry. I helped directly two companies go public, Travel Zoo and United Online in New York City and Los Angeles. I'm originally from Cleveland. Um, I think it's our duty. Um, you know, I, I did not expect to create a nonprofit. I did not expect to be involved um, with social impact, but um, you know, our youth are our future. And um, I, you know, wanted to use my skills and give back. And I wanted to um, give and do what I'm good at. And so um, I think that it's everyone's duty actually to help empower our youth. And I love EYEJ. It's an extraordinary organization. And um, yes, I agree. It is very timely. So thank My, you. We really appreciate that. She's saying it's our duty to use these talents, use these skills to have that that impact. Our final judge is my man. He's absolutely a myth and a legend. Tayo Roxon of UID Management. He's a writer, a speaker, consultant, podcaster, co-founder, and brand strategist at UID Management. They are helping organizations across the world think about sustainable diversity and inclusion. Tayo is the host of a podcast. If you haven't listened to it, you've got to check it out. It's called As Told by Nomad. As told by Nomads. He's the author of Use Your Difference to Make a Difference. And he's launched Let's Talk Bias, a new campaign this year. You absolutely got to check out. So timely on the national anti-racism campaigns going on. Tayo, welcome to the challenge. How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling great. Thanks for having me. I'm excited for this. Tayo, here's what I want to know. You're a translator your whole career. You're a translator between different cultures, different organizations. That, that's such a skill of yours of being able to bridge divides. For the entrepreneurs who are going to be pitching today, how can they be thinking about cultural gaps, unification, inclusion, when they're pitching a product, telling their story? How do they make sure they can speak to all the audiences that might be listening? Well, you have to have a firm grasp of the problem and problems you're trying to solve. So, you know, a lot of it you touched on when you, you discussed doing the research and understanding, you know, why your solution is unique, but being able to communicate to why your solution, product, service, you know, either cuts time, saves, you know, uh, uh, people from certain solutions or gets people from um, a current situation to a desired destination is going to be uh, very important because many people listen in different ways. But if you're able to get to what it is that they need in the, using the language or, you know, process that you have, you're pretty much ahead of the game in that, in that sense. Y'all, Tayo's telling you, get those ears out and listen up. If you can understand your problem, you can really pay attention to those pain points. You'll be able to speak to that audience much more firmly, having that grasp of that problem. So y'all, our judges are here. They're ready to rock and roll. We're going to put a slide up on the screen, giving an overview of who the teams are uh, that are joining us at this competition. Here's the scoop of how it's going on. We have four teams, two in each track, small business track, innovation track. I'm going to bring on a team. I'm going to announce their team name, their schools, who's a part of this group. The teams are going to have seven minutes max. I will cut you off. Seven minutes max to give their pitch to these judges. We're then going to enter a three-minute Q&A section. Judges, feel free to go right in. Just pop yourself off mute, ask questions. I will not moderate at that time. Go for those in that three minutes. After that three minutes, we're going to do a hard stop. We're going to keep moving. We're going to go through those four teams, small business track first, two teams, innovation track first, two teams. We're going to go in this order, and we are going to rock and roll. Brant, are we ready to rock? Are we ready to bring up this first team? I think we're ready. Let's uh, give us just one second. We'll get them pulled up, and we're good to go. All right, y'all. Doing that backstage warm-up. All right, stretching that arms. My judges, they have glasses on. They're going. They're looking. They're, they're tuned in. Y'all. Are we ready to rock? Are we ready to bring this first team on? Here is who we got. I'm talking on the small business track. First up, the nature of 
kindness. Kayla Morris, Rhea Mahajan from the Hathaway Brown School, Nature of Kindness, Small Business Track, over to you. All right, thank you so much for having us. We're super excited to be part of this competition and we're super excited to give our pitch. So I guess we're not gonna waste any time. We're just gonna go right into it. Yeah. All right, I'm just gonna be a moment to share my screen. And here we go. So, Rhea, are you ready? Yeah, let's do this. All right. Hi, I'm Kayla Morris. And I'm Rhea Mahajan. And we're the founders of Nature of Kindness, a Cleveland nonprofit spreading positivity and environmental awareness through eco friendly kindness packages, which are little envelopes of positivity directly orderable for someone that's special in your life. So, positivity has always been a cornerstone in our lives and upbringings, but in reality, the majority of Americans are not happy. Only 14% report to being very happy, and feelings of loneliness have increased by 200% since 2018. And at the same time that positivity is decreasing, the amount of waste produced is exponentially increasing. In the past 60 years alone, the amount of waste generated each day by a single person has increased by 80% to 4.9 pounds. That adds up to over 2,000 pounds per person per year. And that's why we need more kindness. With kindness, we can combat the negativity and waste production overload. When we're kind to each other, we increase our happiness and well-being. And when we're, when we're kind to our earth, specifically through waste management techniques like recycling, we lead to a more sustainable environment with pure water and more resources and less greenhouse gas emissions. So kindness truly is multidisciplinary. And in fact, nature is a key contributor to reducing our negative emotions like stress and anger and frustration, which means that kindness to the earth also correlates with um, kindness to ourselves. So that's why we've created our product, a kindness package, which is a bridge between kindness and sustainability. And inside the package, you'll find three quote sheets, which you can select from a list of 10. You'll find one gratitude card, which is just a thank you for being you from the sender to the recipient. You'll find an act of kindness card on plantable paper. So you can do the act of kindness that we give you, and then you can plan it for a little reward. And finally, you'll find a sticker sheet designed by our partner, Sophie Studio, which is exclusive and only available in this package. And that's all inside of a biodegradable envelope. And ordering a package is super easy. All you have to do is go to our website, personalize it, and we'll ship it out to you within a week. So Nature of Kindness was built on four pillars. First of all, sustainability. We truly care about the environment and each part of the package ensures the least amount of waste. Two, kindness. Our customers are the number one priority. Three, our affordability. At $10 a package, the product is available to anyone, no matter their socioeconomic class. And lastly, we're Cleveland based. By targeting our local community, we make small areas more positive at a time. And the hope is that this will lead to a domino effect and the kindness initiative will spread to other cities. So our pillars really differentiate us from our competitors. No one else in the industry has the same niches as us. And furthermore, no other product gives you more bang for your buck than ours. We sell a range of products in one envelope at the cheapest price in the market. And speaking of our market, so we appeal to like-minded young adults in the region, so that's 15 to 24 years old, and about 265,000 people, but around 85% of young adults believe in spreading positivity, so our customer base is a little smaller than that. However, because over 90% of teenagers believe that seeing positivity in their community will directly correlate with them spreading positivity, um, our base will constantly be expanding, and it'll be like that domino effect that Rhea mentioned um, earlier. The more packages we send out, the more orders we'll receive. And as shown in the slide, in our business model, we anticipate selling 100 packages within our first year of being open, so that's 2021. And that combined with the grant of our, from our school will equal $1,500 in revenue, um, taking away our, expense, our expenses for our operating prices, um, which is our materials for our packages, and our operating costs, which are a bit higher this year due to our opening. That leaves about $320 in income. And we give about 50% of that income um, to our beneficiaries, which are the Sierra Club, a grassroots environmental organization, and Dare to Lead, which is an anti-bullying organization by the Cleveland Leadership Center. So about $160 goes to them, and the remaining 50% of our income goes back to us to help us sustain our business. Yeah, and like Kayla said, our first year goal was to sell 100 packages, but having sold 80 within one month of opening already, we do anticipate needing to adjust that goal. 
And as shown in the bar graph on the left, we anticipate our sales increasing exponentially over the next three years from $1,500 in 2021 to $250 in the next two years. And here you can see those numbers reflected in a more graphical format. We have our income statement, which shows everything we just described. And then on the right side here, you can see the cost of our goods sold. So the cost it takes us to buy our product or to buy our materials. And then our operating expenses over here. And then on the bottom left, you can see our financial projections or how we expect to grow in the next three years. Because like we said, this is a long-term business. And as an operating business, it's important to have like-minded companies to support and partner with us. So far, we've partnered with the marketing team at our school, Hathaway Brown, It's a Girl's Life, which is a nonprofit aiming to empower girls, The Catalyst Project, which is a social justice publication, and Sophie Studio, the creator of our custom sticker sheet. And in addition to partners, we've received some attention from the media for our work. We were in the Northeast Ohio Parents February cover story, Kindness Counts, which was seen by over 14,000 parents. We've also been on our schools and partners' Instagrams. For example, Sophie Studio, who has around 3,000 followers, featured us in a post when we were initially launching. We also recently partook in the Youth Entrepreneurship Forum by the Cleveland Leadership Center, um, in which we were featured panelists to a live audience around um, 200 attendees. You can see the picture of that on the top right. And we got to speak about our business and our creative process, which was really exciting. And as comes with running any business, it comes with its challenges. So first of all, Kayla and I encountered having limited experience because all of our interactions with business has been in theoreticals and in the classroom. To counter that, we've sought professional assistance from local business owners to gain advice on how to run our business successfully. We also have limited money upon opening as the expenses you foresee yourself um, needing are usually higher than you anticipate. So we solve that um, with smart budgeting and smart use of our money. And of course, running a business is a large time commitment. So we plan on re recruiting volunteers to offset that. And as I said, we know the need for kindness is long-term and it will keep on being a need even after COVID, which is why we have some long-term goals. So first of all, we plan to continue partnering with like-minded and local businesses. We also plan to develop packages based on different occasions. And then we'll expand our social media and online presence and increase marketing to target a wider audience. And then finally, we plan on reducing our expenses so we can maximize our donation amounts. Um, so keep on spreading that kindness. So, thank you. Team kindness. That was absolutely incredible. Love the mission, love the product, but you're not here to hear from me. We're here to the judges. So we're entering three minutes Q&A with the judges. Y'all, over to you. Hi, everybody. Um, I thought you did a brilliant job. I'm definitely very familiar with um, Hathaway Brown and your program, and I've worked with some of the partners that you're working with. Um, I thought that you guys were extremely clear and you told the story very, very well. I think my question is, I'd love to learn more about the 80 packages that you sold and what were the responses from them besides the PR. Um, I'd love to understand that. And I'd love to understand in a more detailed way um, on your next step needs of like, what are your dream partners um, and a little more clarity around um, what you'd like to see and what exactly you need, how much money? Yeah. So um, I can answer the first question on the responses for the 80 packages. So, so far we've sold to our local communities, um, which spreads from Northeast Ohio and in fact includes Michigan as well. Um, so it's spread to family, friends, friends of the friends. It's a pretty wide range. And we've definitely received some like positive um, feedback and appreciation for the packages. We've received some messages on Facebook and Instagram being like, these packages really brightened my day. And that's really what we want to achieve. So it made us feel really good about what we're doing. Yeah. And in terms of partnering with other organizations, I would say one of the biggest things we hope to do is to find other businesses selling products that we could feature in our product because we're really hoping to spotlight those local businesses who are doing good through their product. And then additionally, we hope to reach other social justice organizations um, so we can just um, build a community of like-minded um, organizations who all doing um, their best to spread positivity and just kindness all around. Thank you. And just one thing to note, I think you have an opportunity with your first initial 80 customers and turning them into your own brand ambassadors. 
So maybe thinking about that a little bit. Yeah, thank you. We'll definitely think about that. Uh, so I, and great job, great job, Rhea, great job, Kayla. I really loved um, how you presented it. Remember problem solution. I loved how you highlighted that, you know, happiness is declining and waste management is also increasing. But something I had was the questions I have are around your next step. So you mentioned you want to reduce expenses and you have social media plans. So I'm curious if you could shed some more light on that because the expenses you have are pretty high right now. So how do you plan on reducing those expenses and uh, what types of social media campaigns are you planning on having? Yeah, for sure. So I would say um, one of our biggest expenses comes from our envelopes because it's really hard to find sustainable products that are cheap just because it takes so much to make them. So we're constantly looking into ways that we can make our packaging cheaper while still making it high quality. Um, so that would be the biggest expense we're looking to um, lower. And then just overall, just seeing if there's anything else we can find that's cheaper. But I would say the envelopes are the biggest thing we're focusing on. And then Rhea, I don't know if you wanna tackle the second part of that. Um, no. Uh, we are just at time uh, anyway. Team okay. Kindness, we wanna thank you so much. Absolutely incredible pitch and we look forward to finding the results. Kayla and Rhea, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. All right, y'all. So we are now moving on to pitch number two on the small business track. This is an incredible company. They are called Scaper. We have Cooper Lyons and Caden Alam from Bay Village High School. They're going to give their seven minute pitch. We're going to have three minutes of Q&A. I'm going to put my video back on when there's about 30 seconds left. So you know when you're just about time and let's rock and roll. Cooper and Caden from Scaper, over to you. All right, guys, thank you so much for having us today. We're just going to get right into our slides, so. Let me share my screen. All right. Introducing Scaper, the online platform that revolutionizes the landscaping experience. The problem. Landscaping is obscure with too many, cost, too many consumers with confusing estimates and unexplained prices. Large firms will oftentimes try to take advantage of naive and uninformed homeowners. It's not cost effective for homeowners to hire large established landscaping firms as small to mid-sized jobs are not worth their time. Landscapers in high school and college often struggle to effectively market, which limits their potential for growth. Both Cooper and I, with our experience in the landscaping industry, are acutely aware of the difficulty of marketing when we're, you first start off. This is how Scaper solves these problems. Scaper will, Scaper will provide a simple, comprehensive platform that connects homeowners and landscapers. It will remove the stressful process of calling large firms to receive a confusing and often expensive quote. Furthermore, it will give high school and college landscapers a premier way to market themselves and attract clients for a low monthly rate. These landscapers can now catalyze their revenue and growth all on one platform. They simply complete their job, gain a good review, and watch as the clients come to them. Our mission. We aim to empower young entrepreneurs to grow and expand their businesses, to give them the tools to control their own destinies, and to create the opportunity to learn valuable business skills at the same time. We plan to use 10% of our net profit to establish a fund for scaper landscapers slash vendors that can be used for business costs and or college tuition. This is how scaper works. As a landscaper, you're going to register for an account and have your business verified through our process. Once verified, you'll be prompted with various monthly subscription packages, each with their own benefits. Upon subscription, you'll have full access to the automated marketing and all the tools that the Scaper platform provides. As a homeowner, it's as simple as a quick sign up and you'll have full access to Scaper for free. You'll have the ability to securely contact landscapers through our platform, view industry price averages, receive and compare quotes from multiple companies and base your decision on reviews and past work. This is our business model. Service or the service provider, which in this case is Scaper, markets to vendors, which are high school to college age landscapers. The landscapers pay Scaper a monthly rate in order for the service Scaper to connect them with consumers, which in this case are homeowners. Financial feasibility. Scaper can be feasibly started with $10,000, if not less. Our product development budget, which consists of website construction and platform maintenance, totals to $5,400. Our marketing budget, which can, includes local flyers and direct mail and social media advertising, 
totaled us to $2,200. Our back end budget, which can includes legal and tax fees, totaled us to $500, with the total budget being roughly $8,100. Here's some information about our location and target market. The target location for the small to mid scale jobs that vendors attain from Scaper will come from the middle to upper cl middle class suburbs. Homeowners will likely be middle aged to older as they will not have the time to take care of their own lawns. The target market that Scaper is gaining revenue from are high school to college age landscapers that are seeking to grow their landscaping ventures. Here's some data about the size of the market that Scaper is trying to capture. Our total available market is $93 billion, which is the total US landscaping market. Our serviceable available market is $43.9 billion, which is the total US residential market, meaning only jobs that need to be, be completed for uh, homes. Our serviceable obtainable market is $163 million, which is the estimated small to mid scale size jobs in Northeast Ohio alone. Scaper's direct competitors are Home Advisor, Angie's List, and Thumbtack. Our competitive advantages are Scaper is far more affordable with packages for landscapers starting at $10 a month upwards. For example, Home Advisor charges a $290 annual fee, as well as you pay $20 to $70 per lead. Keep in mind a lead is not a secure job. Scaper markets towards smaller enterprises the competition ignores, giving them better deals and more marketing. Scaper is localized and puts emphasis on greater customer client relationship. Scaper modernizes landscaping through customers having direct access to information like industry price averages. Here's our growth plan. Stage one, the creation and implementation of Scaper platform combined with aggressive marketing techniques in Northeast Ohio. Stage two is our first round of capital raising, expanding outside of Northeast Ohio to surrounding areas. Stage three is our second round of capital raising, expanding across multiple states, increased capabilities, including transactions via website. Our team consists of myself, Kay Nullum, and I'll be responsible for web design and development, site operations, and online marketing. I'm the founder of Bay Mulcher Company, which pulled in $40,000 plus in revenue last season, and with projected growth taken into account this year, we plan on hitting the six-figure mark. I'm also the founder of VentureShare. My name is Cooper Lyons. I'll be in charge of revenue generation, business operations, and financial management at Scaper. I'm the founder of Lake Erie Landscaping, which took in over $15,000 in revenue last season. I'm also chief of content creation at VentureShare, which is an online platform that seeks to empower young entrepreneurs to grow their businesses. With both of our combined insights and experience in the landscaping industry, we truly believe that we can grow Scaper into a successful enterprise. Join us as Scaper revolutionizes the landscaping industry and empowers young entrepreneurs to grow their businesses. Team Scaper, thank you so much for that presentation. Cooper and Caden are not messing around. Judges, we want to go over to you. We're going to start three minutes of Q&A now. So um, great job, guys. Um, two questions for you. So first of all, um, what stage are you guys in with the business right now? Are you still in idea stage? Have you done any um, designs or started initially on any of the website stuff? So fill me in on kind of where you guys are with things right now. Yeah, definitely. So we're in the process of creating a mock website, a, uh, this like a baseline site. And we're uh, in the process of proving proof of concept. We've done some uh, preliminary surveys in our area for young landscapers and found that there's a pretty good, um, there's a need for this, but in term, we haven't done it like nationwide or uh, statewide yet, but we're in the process of that. We, we really need some funding capital um, to kind of pursue those, like things like website development, because that can get pretty pricey and we have to buy the domain name and stuff like that. Of course. So that leads perfectly to my next question is, do you guys um, currently have any funding for this yet? And um, if you guys would, you know, win the prize money today, what would you put that towards? Yeah, I mean, so we have our some seed money from our landscaping ventures. A lot of that has gone to things like uh, Roth IRAs and stuff like that. So we can't really access that at this point. But uh, yeah, we would definitely use the $3,000 to hopefully uh, do things like buy the domain name, um, help fund that website development, and as well as um, some marketing techniques, because that is going to get pretty pricey. Um, things like social media ads, search engine optimizations that we can really target that younger uh, market that we're trying to capture. Right. We plan on putting the full $3,000 towards this business as an online platform such as this really needs a lot of marketing to build up to that soft launch to get a large influx of traffic. Yeah. Great. 
Great job, you guys. Um, I love the social impact portion that you added to your business. Um, I would have loved to see um, more information about you guys up front. I think that you guys are your credibility, which is which is amazing. Um, and I also agree. I think um, I, what I would love to know more about are your marketing tactics because you're you're really going into a very competitive space. Um, and then finally, have you thought about partnering with other painting or college movers, you know, other organizations that are focused on high school and college based businesses? Like I think two men in a truck is an idea, but I'd love to hear more about your marketing tactics because you're going to need a lot of support there. Right. Um, so we realized that this is a, a big industry to kind of jump into with obviously the competitors that we listed, Home Advisor, Angie's List, Thumbtack. So our plan was to essentially do more targeted marketing, which is why we chose such a selective niche, such as landscaping, that we are going to target landscapers in our area that we know from our experience in the industry. And like Cooper said, we've been doing preliminary surveys with people who we know who work in the landscaping industry at our school to kind of get that testing baseline and then move from there. But definitely Google AdWords, Facebook ads, uh, search engine optimization and kind of just the majority of our budget is going to be getting our name out there. So cool. Cooper and Caden from Escaper, thank you so much for that incredible pitch and wishing you guys the best of luck. So with that, we have our two small business track teams. We heard from Nature of Kindness, Kayla and Rhea, and then now from Escaper, Cooper and Caden. And we're now switching tracks, switching gears into the innovation track. We have two companies, two ventures that are gonna pitch in the innovation track. A reminder for everybody tuning in, the runner up, $1,000. The winner, $3,000, we're talking cash. So first up in the innovation track, Neo Signo Sense with Raghav Malik, Soham Joshi from Columbus Academy. Seven minutes to pitch, I'm gonna come back with 30 seconds left. They're going to go three minutes Q&A. Raghav Soham, over to you. Your seven minutes starts now. Okay. Imagine living in a world where everything is pitch black and silent. This is a life for Emma, a deafblind college student majoring in elementary and special education. She has no vision and has minimal hearing with the help of two hearing aids. Emma struggles through college as she cannot communicate with her peers or participate in class and speaking up has always been a challenge for her. Emma has deaf blindness, a condition that hinders individuals to effectively communicate with the people around them and has severe effects on an individual's mental health and economic opportunity. What's worse, over 466 um, million individuals worldwide are deaf and 97.6 million are deaf blind, but only 20 to 30 million of these individuals who need care providers have access to them. This leaves over 58 and a half million deafblind individuals worldwide who do not have access to the support service providers or braille devices that they need to communicate. And this does not even include individuals who are solely deaf or solely blind. The World Health Organization estimates 70 to $110 billion is spent every year towards deaf assistive technologies and education. And 63 to 73% of this is spent outside high income countries. Yet only a small percentage of the deaf and deafblind population is assisted. Additionally, in the next 50 years, estimates confirm that the number of deaf and deafblind individuals will double in size. So what do these 60 million individuals do? Although deaf and deafblind organizations are working to help individuals acquire better communication devices, such as braille readers and writers, these range from $1,000 to $15,000 and require large, large laptops to display text. Because of this, national organizations spend lots of money to assist only about a sixth sixth to a third of the deafblind population. The rest of the deafblind population must resort to using impractical yet cheap ways to communicate, such as communication cards, which consist of a pre-written message on a card. Deafblindness is clearly a huge emerging problem and there needs to be a cheap yet multi-purpose solution that can adapt to the user's needs. That's why we created Sense, a specialized, easy to use, novel sign language expert, which is a multi-purpose, wearable, robotic, glove-like device which is designed to help people learn sign language. As you can see in this competitive analysis chart, Sense is a unique product in the market. We can teach sign language at a low cost with personalized feedback, where our competition can't. An example is HIM's Braille Sense, which costs around $5,595. 
uh, on average. BrailleSense simply translates text into Braille, which the user can read. However, when a, someone has to talk or communicate with others, this is a very tedious process. So that's why we created Sense, a novel solution that can teach students with sensory difficulties sign language at a lower cost. We have also taken into account the function and anatomy of the human hand in our design. The human hand primarily consists of five flexor tendons, which allow for the flexion of each finger, and the palmar and dorsal interossi muscles, which allow for the abduction and the adduction of the fingers. This was helpful as we realized the primary muscle in use is the flexor muscles and tendons. By only using a single servo motor for each finger instead of a servo motor for every single joint in the finger, the device is designed to be much more affordable with limited drawback and functionality, which allows us to drastically reduce the price of our device, costing us only about $110 to develop, including labor and market manufacturing costs. And we expect to decrease this in the future as we continue to research more efficient motors. We plan to sell our device for $210, giving us a 48% profit margin. We started our prototyping process by creating a model using a 3D prototyping methodology. We then built a more sophisticated glove using 3D printed parts that could perform signs. However, we realized that these prototypes had many drawbacks, so we created our third and final prototype. This stage three prototype is our final prototype with a device that fully encompasses a user's hand with flexion in all fingers and abduction, adduction, and opposition in the thumb and little finger. So how does this work? The glove consists of 3D printed rings that cords are threaded through, allowing for the finger to flex and extend. There's also a mechanism on the back of the hand to allow the thumb to adduct and abduct while still being, being able to bend like the other fingers. Instead of individually programming each of the 34 servos, we perform various signs in front of a camera. While the movement of specific key points on our hands is captured in a 3D space, each key point is associated with a specific servo on the globe. And the angles between these key points are calculated to determine the appropriate position of each of the servo motors when the glove is making a sign. This allows us to easily train the glove to learn new signs simply by finding videos of someone performing their respective gestures, and many libraries already exist for this. Our solution is split into three different modes, the training mode, the assessment mode, and the translation mode. The training mode is where the users can train, the, train themselves by moving their fingers into specific positions. The assessment mode is where the users perform these signs in front, of the, in front of the AI algorithm and our code is able to tell if he or she is performing the sign correctly. And if not, they can get personalized feedback. The translation mode can be used when a deafblind individual has to communicate with others. We've also done significant testing with the device and have confirmed it to perform the ASL alphabet with over a 92% mechanical accuracy. And you can see some examples in this video here. So here's a breakdown of our financials. We have planned to have $1,035 in expenses per month in the original year and sell about seven units per month. And our costs will be used in these areas. This will give us a total monthly revenue of $560 and a burn rate of $475. We expect to become profitable within 18 months as the number of units sold per month will increase and our product research costs will decrease. We need about $16,000 in funding, and we've already obtained a couple thousand dollars from previous competitions. We know customers will choose Sense due to its affordability undercutting the rest of the market by 1,000% while still effectively teaching sign language. Stephanie Logan, a particular deafblind individual, states that sign language utterly changed her life, allowing her to communicate in a totally different way, and we hope many others feel the same way. Once we expand within the United States in the first couple of years, we plan to go worldwide, and our primary consumer will be international deaf and deafblind organizations, such as the World Federation for the Deaf and the World Federation for the Deafblind. These organizations are already spending billions of dollars to help those who are deaf and deafblind with assistive technologies, and we hope to partner with them so that we can market our product worldwide. Initially, we plan to get grants from the state of Ohio, who already spends millions of dollars to support deafblind education. Overall, we built a fully functional device that can effectively teach users sign language while providing personalized feedback. We hope that Sense will one day be able to help many people who are deaf and deaf blind, or anyone who wants to learn sign language. We hope that our product will help those like Emma so that we can make their lives a little bit easier. Thank you. Y'all, that was absolutely incredible. Love the innovation. So excited for what y'all are building. We're gonna enter three minutes of Q&A from our judges for Sense. Judges, over to you.
This was brilliant, uh, uh, gentlemen. This is so brilliant. I, I love the use of acronym. I love the problem you're solving. It is so necessary. And it's always a reminder of just how much we take for granted. My, my question has to do with the testing. I wanted to learn a little bit more about that. Have you tested with other deaf blind individuals? If so, what have been, you know, the, what's the feedback been? And, you know, how are you trying to make sure that you're always testing so that, you know, you're on top of things? Great question. So um, because of our like current global situation, we've, we're not able to actually like have a deafblind user wear the glove and provide us feedback. But as Soam will talk about, we've contacted many organizations to validate our product and have had support from these organizations throughout our current progress. Yeah, so um, we contacted some of those organizations. We contacted some deafblind um, support centers in Ohio and we, we showed them our idea and, and all of them loved it and they gave us positive feedback. And so once we are able to test our glove, we'll be able to test it with um, actual deafblind individuals. Um, but so in our preliminary testing where we tested, can our glove make the signs? Um, we found that it can uh, about 92% of the time, which is really accurate. Um, and so we're confident that our glove will work. We just haven't tested it with um, actual people yet. I think that you guys, this was mind blowing um, and you may have addressed this and I may have missed it, but um, what are your plans for a patent? Yeah, so that's actually what some of the funding from um, the wheel competition would go to. And so our first step uh, it is to get a patent. Uh, and so we're currently um, looking at different pro bono services um, for high school students so that we can get a patent at a lower cost. Um, and so we expect this to cost anywhere from $3,000 to $5,000. Um, and so once we get a patent, we then hope to start making partnerships with, um, with some of these schools and so that we can then start to sell our units and start to make more connections. But a patent is our first step and we are looking into ways um, to bring down this cost. Yeah, and we've already submitted an application for a provisional patent right now. Awesome. Um, another question for you guys. Um, I assume you guys are making these yourselves right now. Is that correct? Um, how long okay. does it take you to actually make one of the gloves? So the, the stage three prototype that you saw here, it took us only about a couple of weeks to uh, create it from start to finish. And like when you go to like recreate that to actually sell them to people, um, mm -hmm. do you expect that that process will be faster? Um, and I guess, how do you, you know, um, how will you be able to uh, you make them eff as efficiently as you can once you start to actually sell them in scale? Yeah, great question. So yeah, that's definitely something that we're planning to speed up as we continue to develop since we already have um, since we're 3D printing most of the parts in our glove, we already have the files already contained. And so all we need is access to um, a faster 3D printer, which we're also planning to allocate some of our funding into. And once we have that, we can just uh, rapidly just create multiple prototypes just by using that same file and, um, and more like streamline that process. Yeah, and just As to add a little bit um, to that, a, a lot of those um, weeks that we spent to creating the stage three prototype were exploration in order to find the best ways to achieve what we wanted to achieve. Um, and so that now we have all the parts ready, um, the process to actually assemble the glove is fairly simple. Um, and we don't expect the glove to um, take too long to build and, and with a pretty efficient process um, and with uh, a bulk units being produced, it should take um, a couple of hours to produce each glove. So um, that is incredible. We know we're going to be watching and seeing how it goes. Thank you so much once again for Sense, Raghav Malik, Soham Joshi from Columbia Academy on our innovation track. Thank you, guys. And we're here. We're moving to number four, our final pitch of the day on the innovation track, number two. We're hearing from Second Chance. Lauren Vonovich, Mariana Steele from Hathaway Brown School, an incredible organization on the innovation track. Ladies, you have seven minutes for your pitch. I'm going to come back in when you got 30 seconds left. Then we're going to go to three minutes Q&A. Your seven minutes, over to you, second chance. Uh, hello, my name is Lauren Vonovich. And my name is Mariana Steele. And we're here today to talk about an opportunity to change the world. We are in global crisis. 1.3 billion tons of waste are generated across the world each year. This crisis is only worsening, leading to climate change and pollution and harming wildlife, public health, quality of life, and financial matters. Urban waste generation is a pressing issue that affects millions of people. This diagram shows the United States' role in the regional share of global waste. 
it is evident that North America and specifically the US produces significantly more relative waste than any other country. When this occurs, global warming rates increase as well as pollution harming global infrastructure and our world in general. This issue affects us personally as well. In our community, there is abundant confusion over recycling guidelines. As you can see, our head of school goes as far as to address recycling contamination and the amount of money it has cost the school. And this happens weekly and is not an isolated incident. An estimated 292.4 million tons of urban municipal waste is created in the U.S. each year, and this number is on the rise. With such a high individual municipal solid waste generation rate, this issue has and will continue to get worse. We live in a complex world. However, it is exactly that trait of the recycling system that has led to people completely avoiding recycling, or even worse, recycling incorrectly and creating contamination. Nine out of ten people said they would recycle if it were, quote, easier. No one should ever have to struggle to recycle or wonder whether to throw something away just to avoid making a mistake and creating contamination. Thankfully, Second Chance has developed a solution to this issue for a more sustainable future. Second Chance is a revolutionary startup recycling tracking service with a sleek attachment known as Gretchen that goes on each household's recycling bin, paired with an expansive app that tells them all they need to know about recycling policy, staying sustainable, and keeping their carbon footprint as low as possible. Using near-infrared technology, Gretchen will turn green, red, blue, or yellow to alert users if their garbage is recyclable, waste, compostable, or unknown, eliminating confusion over recycling protocol. Now this diagram is a great representation of the components of the device. Gretchen has a standard snap dome and silicon rubber housing sleeve, letters K and M, to serve as outward protection of the product, as well as central housing, letter E, to protect the place where the magic happens. Now all of these parts are important, however, it is the processor with the IR spectrometer, letter F, that allows the device to discern between objects and their ability to be recycled, composted, or trashed. To give everyone a better understanding of this technology, Near Infrared Spectroscopy, or NIR for short, is a type of instrumental chemistry that focuses on the near infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. This technology measures wavelengths in order to identify functional groups of substances, helping to identify what the substance is. By using NIR technology to scan a substance and then matching the results to known functional groups, Gretchen can identify what a substance is and then categorize it. In consideration of competition, there is no direct competition in this field specifically. However, Second Chance will face indirect competition in terms of the current recycling infrastructure. However, Second Chance has the competitive advantage with profitability for all parties through increased efficiency and decreased contamination, as demonstrated with our streamlined approach. Additionally, SC has the advantage due to the niche nature of our market and the fact that we are the only NRI waste scanner for recycling, compost, and waste. SC is predicted to have a wide market range with a total addressable market of three to five billion, a serviceable available market of 246.15 million individuals or 89,004 municipalities, and a serviceable obtainable market of 20,082 households in our first five years. This sum is incredibly conservative as we would only need to obtain a small portion or 10% of three municipalities to reach our goal. Our target market for Ohio counties rests in two groups, municipalities, including waste management boards and area disposal contracts, and waste management organizations, including recycling centers and private collection companies. By marketing toward the infrastructure that utilizes recycling and waste services, as well as the waste services themselves, Second Chance can leverage our position in each process to build governmental interest and consumer support. Second Chance's revenue streams include public contracts, both municipal, county, and area disposal and private companies. Additionally, SC will gain revenue from the online marketplace and our app, accounting for 5% of gross sales on the platform. We will also look into sponsored ads for reputable, eco-friendly companies to generate profits. Our initial financing estimate will be split between prototype and app development, totaling of around $100,000. We will look toward grant programs for innovative startups as well as additional business competitions to build the capital we need to get Second Chance off the ground. In order to launch our business, SC believes we have the interpersonal and conceptual skills required. My partner and I have experience in executive leadership, financial planning, money management, and networking. However, we need technical skills in software development, advertising, production, and distribution, which we plan to attain through advanced business courses, reaching out to software developers and design companies, and exploring ad agencies. In an attempt to be realistic, SC is prepared for obstacles that may come up while launching our business, including prototype creation, app development, copywriting, and funding issues. 
we recognize that we lack the experience necessary to fully understand the process of building both a functional device and a paired app. However, we are very confident that even with delays in creating a working prototype for each or unexpected issues in funding, that we can pull through with an additional capital raising or a small business loan. With all things running smoothly, though, this will be an accurate timeline representing SC's goals. With the first two months of 2021 having already gone by, we are currently preparing to apply for a variety of grant programs that will give us the funding we need to get started on prototyping. As the year progresses, we hope to have created a functional model of the device by September and start getting trial consumer testing going. Second Chance has a goal of getting its first municipal or waste management contract by May of 2022 and expanding as much as possible from there. This is our chance to begin reversing the effects of climate change and global pollution on the world. By unburdening our recycling system and ineffective waste management practices, we can greatly reduce governmental and consumer spending on waste contamination. Recycling should not be hard. And with Second Chance, you won't give it a second thought. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Y'all, Second Chance, absolutely incredible innovation. Thank you, ladies, so much. We're heading into our three minutes to Q&A. Begins now, judges, over to you. So um, I know you guys are still early stages with this, but um, can you talk a little bit about how much you think this will actually cost um, when it comes to actually, you know, selling it to your customers? Yeah, of course. Um, so as we uh, displayed in our sales forecast, though I know we didn't link it above, um, we're looking to spend around um, $200 per device in the first um, developmental stages of the product, seeing as how IR spectroscopy is a relatively new um, research topic and therefore the technology behind it is relatively expensive. Um, and so we will be selling them for $250 in the first year, but we're hoping that as the technology becomes more and more used and well known that the price will drop with mass production and distribution and then we can match that in our uh, price lowering in future years. And apologies for the noise in the background. Uh, our school is currently under renovation, so there's a lot going on. <laughs> My question and uh, great job, ladies. This this was really I, I really like the focus of a lot of all all these businesses because you're you're truly solving problems. There's a significant amount of cost that is going to be here <laughs> involved, and so. How are you, I, I saw a bit of it, but I want to know, how are you prioritizing what needs to be done first? Because I think that's going to be very important as you decide to market and how you show up. Um, so our first goal is the hardware. We are more interested in creating the scanner because that's what our business is truly about. And it's the true uh, innovation and using the new technology for our business. Um, and so that will be our primary focus. Uh, if we can get enough money to start with the hardware development, then once we finish that and we have the resources and maybe we could even get our hardware up and running and selling into the marketplace, then we're going to focus more on the uh, software development to um, really polish everything up and have it come together. Yeah, and as you can see, uh, we went through it pretty quickly, but our timeline actually reflects that belief because we have the initial stages of production solely focused on the hardware and getting the device up and running because it's it can function without the app itself. The app is just to provide you know a bit more security in terms of consumer understanding of how things work and uh, you know creating that cohesiveness. I was just gonna jump in. Good job, you guys. Um, I, I I completely agree with you. The need is so big, um, and I love what you guys are doing. Um, just a couple of things is like I'm I don't come from that industry. I do not understand it. It's not my expertise. And so thinking about who you're speaking with and maybe simplifying it a bit, I think might be an opportunity for growth there. And then also thinking about the brand name. When I first heard the brand name, I thought you guys were going to focus on something around criminal justice reform. So maybe, you know, keeping sticking with the product name for right now is plenty. So just just some comments from my end. Thanks. Maya, we appreciate your feedback. Yeah. Thank you. Second chance. Once again, incredible job and best of luck as we move to the evaluation stage. Good luck, guys. So with that, we're going to take a few minutes over here. I'm going to pop something on the screen, which is an interactive creative submissions. Y'all, we're giving away prizes at towards the end of the day. You have time. So you got the end of the day. And while this is up, we're going to put on some music and our judges are going to go to the back room virtual this year to discuss and deliberate, make sure we get the scoring all computed and find out
who are our winners. So we're going to be back in less than 10 minutes. So don't go anywhere. Put the, you know, put the volume up, get a, a snack or a drink, enter the competition. You're going to see the, the information here. It's also going to be in the chat. So we look forward to catching you back. We're going to be doing our scoring and best of luck to all the participants. Thanks so much, y'all. And make sure to enter for a chance to win the prize by the end of today. All right, y'all. The results are in. And oh, okay, y'all. Here's what we're doing. Yeah, the booth is we're, we're we're rocking and rolling. So here's the scoop. The winners are in. I want to be very clear. The winners are in, and we're about to be announced. What we want to do is go through the final teams. We want to say a little bit about each team. What was the highlight a takeaway from our judge? So we're gonna go through all four, get a little bit of a teaser and insight into what the judges were thinking about. And then in just a few minutes, I'm gonna announce the winners of our both tracks. Lonnie, I wanna start with you on Nature of Kindness. Give us your take, incredible organization, a great mission. What were you thinking about when they were pitching? So first of all, Nature of Kindness Girls, great presentation. You guys, um, you know, really, really thought through, um, thought through your business, thought through your product, thought through all of your costs. And, um, you know, I just felt like you guys had a very thought out plan for not only where you are now, but what your next step is and where you're going to be going. So that was super exciting to see. Um, overall, just great mission. You know, everybody needs more kindness um, and more happiness in their life, especially right now. Um, so I think, you know, you guys are hitting a really great time with that particular mission. Um, you know, but overall, like I said, it, I think you guys just thought through this very well, came up with a very feasible product. And it was exciting to see that you guys are already making progress and getting out there and doing things at this stage. Um, you know, even, even coming into this competition before you would walk away with any type of award money, you're already out there making things happen. So that's great to see and great job on everything. Yeah, all nature of kindness. You guys are out there moving, shaking, getting into the wind. Lonnie, thank you so much for that. We want to move to Scaper. Mai, talk to me. What were you thinking? How are you thinking evaluating uh, the Scaper concept? Um, I think that you guys are smart. What I love about you guys is that you guys already um, have the experience. Um, and I think we talked about that before. Your credibility is there. Um, and I, I can see the drive and the passion um, and also the um, the um, the youth focus, I think, is going to be a great marketing plug for you guys. So I would use that definitely to your advantage. But great job. Um, I can see you guys are very entrepreneurial and, and hustlers and want to drive this business forward. So well done. My thank you so much for that. Scaper team, you're out there moving. You got the experience making it happen. We really appreciate y'all. All right, Tayo, talk to me about Neo Signo Sense. I, right when they pitched, I saw you come at you were like, wow. So yeah. what was your what was going through your head when you heard that pitch, my man? So it's very personal for me because I run a diversity, equity, and inclusion firm, and and I think a lot of times one of the things that's missed out upon uh, when we're thinking about you know belonging and you know accessibility is, is just that you know the intersectionality of that, and I you, you tackle that by saying deaf blind, and a lot of times people just try to you know check the box or any of these things, and I love the attention to detail, I love the fact that you all are committing to testing and retesting. I'll be very curious to see, you know, and learn more about when you can um, test with, with de deafblind folks. But the focus and everything I saw is in the right direction. And it's a real, it's a real problem. I mean, you all put the numbers out there. These are things that many of us, um, you know, have the privilege of not even paying attention to. And so please continue to stay focused on that. It helps people to be seen, heard and understood for who they really are. And, and I'm really excited to see the future of this. Y'all, Tayo is telling you, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep going. Keep building. You're uh, tackling such an important uh, need. With that, we want to go to our final team. Mai, back to you. Second chance. What are you taking away from that just incredible pitch and those incredible girls? Um, I think that you guys are brilliant. Um, what I think is very realistic about your business is the partnership and your customer that you talked about. For example, um, the issue with your school, Hathaway Brown, I would really hone in on that. And I really want to see um, your next steps and I want to see um, you go deeper um, for sure. But I think you guys did a great job. Um, it's, a, it's a perfect, um, perfect opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, what Maya is telling you is she wants to see it. Let's make it happen. You know, you guys have such great ideas and we want to see if we brought to life. So with that, y'all, we're about to announce the winners. So just so remember, we have two tracks. 
small tra small business track, and then the innovation track. With those tracks, our runner-up, $1,000, and our winning team, $3,000 cash. Two tracks, small business, and innovation. In the small business track, I'm getting it in from the booth. The winner, we're going to put you on camera. We want to know your reaction. One quick comment on how you're feeling, what you're going to do with this all. The winner of the small business track, Nature of Kindness. Congratulations, y'all. Congratulations. How are you feeling? Oh, my God. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're so excited. I mean, it's we really want to grow our business, and we really want to help as many people as possible. So this is going to be really awesome for us. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Y'all, Rhea, Kayla, Nature of Kindness from Hathaway Brown School, congratulations, an incredible venture. We look forward to getting you your cold, hard cash. You can keep building your dreams, spreading that positivity, y'all. Thank you so much and congrats once again. <laughs> and with our innovation track, we have a winner over here. I'm getting it from the booth and we got it. My man, Tyo, he's talking to me. Neo Signo sense Ragav Soham Columbus Academy. Gents, huge congratulations for winning the innovation track. How you feeling? Yeah, thank you so much. This is really amazing. And I'm really um, happy to be part of this. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. And um, I think that this will really help uh, move towards the mission of helping people who are both deaf and blind. So yeah. Team Neo Signo, they're wasting no time. They're using this cash. They're getting in the game, building their venture, and absolutely going to change the world. Guys, huge congratulations once again. And with that, y'all, we have our two winners, the small business track, the innovation track. Our, our runner-up winners are also going to get some cash to keep moving forward, keep building their dreams and having their impact. And, and that's our show for today. We had saw so many incredible ventures and so many teams who got here in the first place to be building their ventures, having that impact. I want to say another huge thank you to Bridget Sukis, Brant Fairchild, Beal Foundation, all the coaches, the volunteers, the staff who made this all possible. The lesson for the day is just get started. Get in the game. You got, whether you won, lost, participated, or just reviewing in, get in the game, just get started and get back to building. So make sure to visit the Think Big Summit page on the website. You can participate in all their activities, complete the event survey. They got a lot of upcoming events as well. We're going to throw our info here on the screen. And with that, we want to know, submit your ideas, get involved with us on social media, VL Youth Entrepreneurship Forum. Our channels are all going to be here. Submit your ideas, giveaways through the end of the day. With that, my name is Justin Ort from NextGen HQ. Thank you so much for having me here. Congratulations again to our winners and be well until 2022, the Think Big Veal Innovation Challenge and Summit. Cool guys, thank you so much.